So today I am going to be covering Thomas Hain. So who exactly was Thomas Hain? Well, he was born under the name of David Theodore Hain, but later on in life changed it to Thomas Theodore Hain. He was a German artist who was born in the late 1800s to the early or mid range of the 1900s. He was born over in Leipzig, Germany. He was established as a caricaturist from an early age and was recruited later on in life by an illustrator named Albert Landon for the first issue of Simplicism magazine. And after it was pushed out, he was deemed as a founder of the magazine. It actually focused on a genre of vices, follies, abuses, and shortcomings, which this genre is actually better known as satirical. Throughout his life, he made many different art pieces that were created for other publications, private projects, and co-founded publications as well. He also decided to study at two different schools, one of them being Kunstakademie Düsseldorf, which is located over in Dusseldorf, Germany, and the other one being the Academy of Fine Arts of Munich, Germany. While his life may have seemed pretty normal, it was rather difficult for him due to the turmoils of World War II. This would later lead to the uprooting from Leipzig. And once he uprooted from there, he actually lived in three different places until his death. Those three places include Prague of the Czech Republic, Oslo of Norway, and finally Stockholm, Sweden. He decided to stay in Stockholm mostly because of his origins and birth and his threats that he was under, which actually ties back to the reason of him leaving Leipzig in the first place was because of the Nazis and Hitler taking over. Finally, he passed away in 1948, just shy of his birthday by a month due to natural causes. Throughout his life, he was a fighter for equality. This was due to fighting against bureaucracy and cronyism. For those of you that don't know, cronyism is basically making it unfair for other people in different lines of work. This is due to allowing friends and acquaintances to have positions of authority without really having any experiences in the fields that they are placed in. So what about his artwork and his style? Well, he pulled from many different aspects to create his own style. The different aspects they decided to pull from include Judensteel, Toulouse-Lautrec, Beardsley, and Japanese woodcuts as well. He used caricature to create simple but dramatic pieces of art. He wanted to create these types of art to show easier ways of understanding what was going on in the world for people to understand easier and for entertainment purposes as well. His art pieces were crafted to focus on one specific element in a simple manner. While each of his paintings have a specific style to them, he liked to focus on one aspect in a piece and make it vastly larger than the rest in order to show the significance of it. The item that is the largest typically is meant to represent the main focus of his message. So what about some of his famous art pieces? Well, in the first one we can see the cover photo for the Munich magazine, Simplicism. It, it shows a picture of a dog, which is actually a bulldog, and the chain is broken to help represent the common people of Germany breaking free of the chains. In the second piece, you can see another piece of art that he created for the Simplicism magazine. And it sh basically helps show the political daring content of the magazine that was also brash. In the first part, it actually shows a couple of royalty that are feeding the geese. And then in the next panel, it shows a bulldog jumping through and grabbing a hold of the boy. The bulldog is to help represent the common people finally fighting back and taking a stand. In the third piece is 
a piece of artwork that he created for The Flowers of Evil. This piece of art was part of the book of poems written by Charles Baudelaire, which was later banned to the eroticism that it implied. So, what made Thomas Hine famous? Well, one of the biggest things that made him famous had to have been the stylisms of his artwork. This was due to being such a unique way of art. People tended to flock to his pieces because of how different and elaborate they were. He also became well-versed in the art community throughout his life. And some of his most famous artistic creations include pieces shown in many different major exhibits. Examples of the exhibits include the International Kunstsammlung Dresden, which is located over in Saxony, Germany, and the Mainz exhibit, which is located in Prague, Czech Republic. Later on in life, he was actually placed into jail due to one of his art pieces and designs of the piece was actually deemed unacceptable by the terms of the German imperial government. He also created a couple pieces of artwork for important occasions. One of them being on the, the very first picture on the left is a piece of artwork named Versailles. This piece refers back to the Treaty of Versailles being signed, which was on the date of June 28th, 1919. And finally, after living such a long life, he decided to create an autobiography. It took him some time to create a name, but in the end, he ended up naming it Itchwart U Auf Wonder, which roughly translates to I wait for miracles or I'm waiting for miracles. This piece of literature actually utilizes humor and atmospheric and humane proses that were unjustly forgotten. He also misses using morality for his middle class characteristics. He utilizes hypocrisy and formality. And the novel is also packed full of bizarre anecdotes. And then here is my work cited that I used for everything for my research. And I hope everyone has a great day and thank you for listening.